Hello there. Today I'd like to bring you a smile because the wine I'm looking at is Domino de Terre's La Sonrisa de Terre's. So Sonrisa, the Spanish for smile. This is a wine from Biezzo and it's made from the Godello grape variety. It's from the 2022 vintage. I have to admit, I haven't come across many white wines from Biezzo, and so when this rather eye-catching label stood out on a shelf to me, I thought I'd be quite interested to taste that. Cordello is a great variety from which I've had some very enjoyable wines, so I thought it'd be fun to try. Domino de Terres was established in 2000. Now that may seem quite recently, but it does make them one of the pioneers of the resurgence of the Biezzo region. To tie that in, for instance, with Alvaro Palacios, going to be at so he he established his descendant of the J Palacios venture in Bietza in 1998. All I can see with regard to ownership is that this was founded by a group of investors and wine lovers. Since 2005 they've also worked with a great variety called Prieto Picudo in the nearby Oteros re region which is in Leon and they briefly also owned a producer in Reyes Baixas but no longer do so. Domaine de Terres works with a group of about 30 small growers and this is largely because the way that the, the Biezzo region is structured is that the, many of these vineyards are handed down within a family, they're continually split and they're becoming smaller and smaller land holdings. The majority of these vineyards are in Lower Biezzo, however the winery is in Alto Biezzo in a place called San Roman de Bembira. And while Domino de Terres has uh, fantastic resources of old vineyards, sort of 40 to 60 year old vines, the majority of these are red varieties, principally Menthia, and the Godello that they had is predominantly planted around the winery in Piezzo Alta. These vines were planted not long after the winery was established and so have a, a, an average age of about 20 years. The vineyards are situated about 650 metres above sea level, so there's a wonderful cooling influence, helping to give crispness and balance. The gently sloping vineyards tend to have slate schist soils over clay, and the vineyards are in conversion to being organic, so fertilisation is done with sheep manure. Godello is a variety with a very long history. It, it, it's related to Verdello, with which it's often confused. It tends to grow in northeastern Spain, Galicia and Castilla, Leon, and also throughout the northern part of Portugal. The variety had almost become extinct by the 1970s, but has been pulled back from the brink, and today there are about a thousand hectares in total in Galicia, and probably another thousand hectares planted in Portugal. The variety has small, quite tightly packed bunches, and as a result, it really doesn't like humidity whatsoever. So the, the maritime-influenced continental climate of, of Biezzo works quite well for it. There isn't normally enough humidity to trouble the variety too much. The fruit's entirely hand-harvested, it's distemmed, it's crushed, and it's left with its skins doing a cold soak for six hours prior to pressing. Fermentation goes on in stainless steel tanks and the temperature of fermentation is restricted to 16 degrees C, so relatively cool. As a result, fermentation can last as long as 40 days. Malolactic conversion is blocked and the wine ages for five months in tank with its fine lees. It sees no oak whatsoever. So let's have a taste and see what we make of it, shall we? Looking at the colour, you have a pale to medium yellow. The wine has 13.5% alcohol according to its label. It's doing a fairly reasonable job of clinging to the glass there. It's, it's reluctantly forming some tears. Let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? On the nose, there's a combination of a number of factors. There's a sort of an underlying white peach fruit aroma. There are lifted mineral notes, presumably coming from the fermentation, sort of perhaps a hint of wet stone, that sort of thing. There's a slightly sappy green hint, and then beyond that, there's a, there's a slight salinity that comes through over the top of that as well. So let's have a taste and see what we make of it. On the palate, the wine is dry. There's a reasonable crispness, but there is actually some 
texture on the front of the mouth coming from that skin contact. You know, there's a little bit of phenolic grip and actually the very fine tannins that are there are interacting with the acidity and that's producing a really mouth-watering sensation on the tip of my tongue. There is this underlying delicate white peach fruit but then over the top of that there are these sort of slight hints of more green fruit maybe there's a little appliness a little bit of sort of the skin of a pear or something like that it is those slightly green phenolic i would almost say slightly sappy note the alcohol is reasonably well balanced perhaps giving a little bit of backbone to a minerality on the mid palate and allowing that to last quite well and as you get to the finish the sort of the whetstone minerality on the mid palate which is perhaps i, I suppose also buoyed up by some slight creamy notes that may come from Lee's aging, is moving on to have this sort of sapid salinity towards the finish, where there is a sort of a mouth-watering and slightly citric note to the acidity at the end. Fruit-wise, it's a relatively lightweight wine, but it's got this sort of mid-weight structure that would really sort of suit it to pair with white meats and goat's cheeses and things like that. And certainly the combination of the tannins and the acidity is giving a lovely mouth-watering length to the wine. It's not hugely complex. I wouldn't expect it to age at all. I'd probably drink this within the next year or so. But I do think it's a lovely refreshing wine with some complexity, which actually offers quite a lot of options for food pairing. And at its price, I think is offering some really good value for money. When I looked at the Wine Search Aggregated Critics score for this wine, this is coming in at an 89. I think that's a very fair score. And as I say, I think at this price, that's a wine that's doing very well. So thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you found the tasting of interest. If you've enjoyed it, please do press the like button. If you'd like to watch more of our tastings, it would be fantastic for us if you would sign up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any comments, please pop those in the comments box below. We, we do appreciate any remarks you make about the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to the whole thing. If you have any friends you think might like to watch the video, please feel free to forward it to them. We, we do appreciate that endorsement from you. I will leave a link in the notes below to the Wine Searcher webpage for this vintage of this wine so you can find out where it's available near you, what its pricing is, and then you can use the tabs on that page to find out more about the region, the producer, the grape variety, its price history, what the critics have said, what other users have said, and a whole host of information about winemaking and things like that. So hopefully you should be able to find there all the information you need to make an informed buying decision. So thank you again for joining us, and I do hope you'll manage to make some time to come and join us for another tasting in the very near future. Till then, bye for now.